Everybody, it's Ty Inspire and welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad that you are here. And if you have not had a chance yet, please don't forget to subscribe, 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 subscribe. <laughs> and um, I'm really excited today because this is the first episode of Heart to Heart. And let me, since it's just our first episode, let me just briefly explain what you're going to see and what heart to heart is so it's my new format for interview conversations with people here um, in Ghana visiting Ghana or wherever wherever I happen to be um, but it's heart to heart conversations about sometimes there'll be some tough topics and um, we're gonna talk about travel we're gonna talk about Ghana life in Ghana expat life um, you name it and whatever is interesting about that person and what they are doing especially what they're doing here in Ghana so I'm very excited to have my first guest. Yay. Yes, and this is my friend. <laughs> and I'm so happy that she's here with me. Thank you Anna. So much. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be the first on this series. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, I'm so honored to be here. Thank Good. You. We're glad to have you. Thank you. And Anna has a lot that we want to talk to her about. Like, okay. We have a lot that we want to talk to Anna about. We'll mm -hmm. say that. Like, Yes, so first of all, let's talk about, I guess, the basics. We'll start with Anna's from Iran, mm -hmm. and she is living here in Ghana. Yes. And she's married to a Ghanaian. Yes. <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah. we have some similar stories, I think, yeah. which is really interesting. Yeah. Like, when we first met, I realized, like, we connected right away. Right away. Uh-huh. And Because we have so much stories. in common. Yeah. Like, both of us used to be in Asia. Mm -hmm. East Asia, I mean, I'm from Asia. But, yeah, we also were into education. Like, I was into education before, and you are, um, mm -hmm. what else? A lot of things, and of course, we are both married to Ghanaian men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, we have so much in common. Yeah, I think yeah. so. So why don't you start by telling us just about, okay, so you're from Iran and you're in Ghana. How huh? did you get to Ghana? <laughs> that question is interesting because I think <laughs> when I tell people um, where I'm from and why I'm here, it's like so many questions pops up yeah. and I'm not helping by, by explaining <laughs> it more and bringing more questions. <laughs> But yes, I'm originally from Iran. Um, I moved to China when I was 22, 20, 21, 22, uh, to study. Mm -hmm. And that's where I met my Ghanaian husband. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, <laughs> there was actually a, a good amount, like good community of Ghanaians living in China. Mm. I'm, I'm sure you also met them, right? Um, maybe not, but I've, I've met Africans, like the good community of Africans, okay. like in Guangzhou. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, uh, we met there and then uh, we decided to come to Ghana mm -hmm. and uh, we've been here for like I've been here for three years he's been here for longer because he came first and then I came mm -hmm. after yeah but um, yeah it's been a journey <clears throat> yeah yeah Ghana has been fun Ghana has been nice okay. I've enjoyed it yes um, I mean of course I'm not saying like I'm not saying everything was perfect yeah it has its own you know uh -huh. issues but overall if I look at it yeah I, I've enjoyed, enjoyed it. it yeah that's good yeah that's good so was it a hard choice to decide to come here very yeah because it was when I moved here it wasn't the first time that I was in Ghana mm -hmm. I traveled with my husband in 2017 mm -hmm. and I don't know there was something about the dynamic of our first trip that didn't really make me interested in Ghana. Oh, okay. There was something, I don't know, maybe it was just too different from my expectation mm -hmm. or things weren't going the way I wanted them to go. Yeah. So I just didn't have the best first impression. Right, right. So like I knew the first trip made me completely sure that I don't want to move here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was so sure. I was like, no, like I'm not ever moving to Ghana. Not there. <laughs> and that's okay. Um, it is yeah. really okay. And sometimes that's how it is in some places. You know, it yeah. takes some time and it needs to grow on you. And, yeah. and I think there is a pressure on a lot of people mm -hmm. to feel the urge of, um, 
I have to have a good first impression. I have to fall in love with the place I move to instantly. And sometimes it just doesn't happen. You That's have hard. to get into the culture first, learn about the culture, and maybe later on you don't like it. Maybe you would. And for me, it was like that. Like yeah. I started liking it afterwards. That's good. I think. Thank you for that insight. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that that's very important to point out that that happens for sure. Mm -hmm. So you, when you traveled to China, was that your first time yes. traveling? Yes, that was the first time yeah. living in Iran. So how was, was life in China? <laughs> oh God, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was interesting. It, also because it was my first time living my country, mm -hmm. and um, I didn't have any family or friends in China. Mm. I didn't know anybody there. Right. So. It was a challenge yeah. to get to know people and um, also it came with you know this kind of um, sense of like freedom that I can do whatever I want so yes it was fun okay you're like right. when you know there's no family or you know uh -huh. you, you get what I'm saying yeah so it was fun China was fun mm -hmm. and I was studying there I was studying art so that was oh, something that cool. I liked and on the yeah. side I was learning Chinese yeah. which I love learning languages so uh -huh. for me it was okay, a good, good experience experience overall yeah. yeah and then I met my husband so yeah exactly. I had everything you know ready for me in China but <laughs> right it was, it was it meant was an to be interesting. it was yeah. an interesting journey uh, the culture though we like Iran and China are both in Asia I just think the cultural difference so was yeah was in a Iran, lot yeah so also it helped me at an early stage in my life to learn about different cultures and try to accept it so okay. i think if i wasn't in china before maybe it wouldn't it wouldn't have been easy for me to adopt to the Ghanaian culture mm -hmm. because i learned okay people can think differently and people can be fine with that you That's don't have right. to impose your own culture everywhere. so that was a good thing yeah, yeah yeah i was gonna ask about that like how did you find the culture and you know chinese uh, people, I mean, I found them very fun. Really? Yeah, like, and just very hospitable. Like, if you go out with them, like, they want to pay for everything. Like, if you pay, they're offended. Like, yeah. it's, you know, and they, they like to have a good time. Okay. And so, I, I enjoyed that. Did you find that too? Yeah, yeah. they're very hospitable. Yeah. The culture is interesting. The language is really interesting. Is, yeah. So, I, I enjoyed learning it. Um, it really is. What else I would say? The food was really good. Uh -huh. I enjoyed the food. I, I love, love the food. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, and most people have this negative idea they about do. Chinese food and you're like, it's so nice. It's How? so nice. Yeah. So I mean, you know, I'm not really an adventure eater. What about you? Yeah, I am. You are? Okay. I, I eat everything and I want to try everything. <laughs> but that's not always the best thing though. I enjoy do that. you miss China? I do. Okay. I do. I miss some parts of it. I definitely want to go back and visit. Um, okay. I don't think that I can live there again. Oh, you can? No, no, but you know, definitely visit. Okay. Do you think you can live there again? You'd like to? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I see myself living in China again. Wow. But, um, like maybe I, I have this fantasy, like I, not fantasy, but I have this dream of living in Shanghai. Mm. I just love Shanghai. Mm -hmm. I travel, I used to travel a lot to Shanghai. Okay. And I love the place. So yeah, if there's an opportunity for me in Shanghai, definitely. So, you know, China is beautiful. It has a lot of wonderful places to visit. Yeah. So, where else did you visit in China other than Shanghai? That, I, I used to travel a lot. So, I used to save all my money just to travel. Yeah. I used to travel a lot. A lot of my friends were traveling to the countries around China. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was more, mostly in, in China. China yeah. mm -hmm. Because I feel like a lifetime is not enough to <laughs> visit everywhere in China. It's just so big. It is really big. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I traveled to like the main big and some of the smaller towns um, mm -hmm. around the province, like the province I was living in, big city. How do you feel about travel? Is it something that you always wanted to do? Um, something that just kind of happened? Um, I've been thinking a, a lot about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think growing up, my, my parents were the type that loved to travel, especially mm -hmm. like this. Okay. And yeah, my parents were like into camping a lot. So they used to take us along. Yeah. And we used to travel 
uh, everywhere like with our tents and growing up because I saw that a lot I didn't like it uh -huh. I always hated traveling <laughs> and like I sometimes reflect about it now and I feel like I really believed that I didn't like traveling Wow because I always hated the way my family was traveling right Wow I liked more like staying at a hotel and enjoying your breakfast on the balcony but my oh. family was like no let's go for adventure let's try here wanted adventure. yeah uh -huh. but then when i grew up i realized i like that i like yeah. people adventures you know it was just okay. hidden inside of me I but see. now i've gotten to the point that i really love adventurous like mm -hmm. adventures trips mm -hmm. yes i would say okay yeah okay. that's good to know that's good i'm definitely an adventure traveler yeah so. Uh, yeah, I like. But you traveled a lot, in, even in East Asia, right? Yeah, it's Southeast fun. Asia is, is is probably my favorite, honestly. So. Yeah. yeah. I, well, maybe it's because I've done it the most, but I love I love Southeast, Southeast Asia. Asia. Have you traveled around Africa, Africa though? Not yet, okay. not much. Just um, one other country other than Ghana. So okay, okay. Yeah, I've got a lot of work to do here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a big continent, so. But I think here is a bit less convenient to travel. Yes. As much as Southeast Asia, because right over there is kind of cheap to travel. Very cheap. And convenient, like there's flight, there's anything you can get yep. to travel. Well but oiled here, machine, like it just it just works. Yeah. Yeah. Like as a student, it wasn't. An expensive luxury for me to travel. That's right. But here, as a student, it would be. You know, right. I can imagine it's that luxury to right. travel to Kenya. Exactly. So, yeah. 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 And it's it's just. I think China is also a really convenient place if you want to go other places. You know, even within in um, Asia, but yeah. even outside of Asia, it's just convenient. Yeah. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Yeah. So more travel in the future. Hopefully. For sure. Hopefully. I want yeah. to travel more inside within Ghana. I'm really okay. looking forward. Yeah. Because I feel like, you know, you don't know a country until you travel. You don't travel to every place in it. Uh -huh. So I want to travel within the country more and hopefully outside Ghana. Mm -hmm. But Africa, like, yes, that's the plan for me. Yes, that, that's what's next is travel in Africa. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Traveling yes. Ghana, travel in Africa. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Okay. Hopefully. Yes. That's, that's good. You definitely should. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to. Yeah. So how's Ghana? Now Ghana. that you're here and you're living here, before you said, you know, you were sure you didn't want to be here. Mm -hmm. But now you're here. <laughs> Let me put my words right because I don't want to offend anyone. But um, I think for me it was a really a journey in Ghana. Uh -huh. So when I first came, mm -hmm. I was so excited. I think the excitement was just not realistic. I was so happy to be here. I have imagined myself so much here. Okay. And I was so excited to try new things and everything. And then COVID started. Mm -hmm. And that was a challenging time because it was a scary time. Like no one knew which place is the best to stay mm -hmm. because you would have thought in developed countries it would be like easier to stay. Yeah, and you're safer. Yeah, but then it was the opposite. Like we didn't feel the COVID as much as people felt it in the West. Right? That's right. That's no. what I just think. And yeah. um, so it was a challenging time because I felt like should I stay? Should I not? And then the lockdown and then post COVID, all those things. Yeah. It was, it changed a, a bit of that excitement in me. Okay. So I would say that I was like this and I went down and again I went up. <laughs> so I think now I'm somewhere in between. I okay. see the good and yeah. the bad at the same time. Okay. I don't romanticize Ghana yes. to say like, oh yeah, this is the place to be. Right. And I don't hate it. But I have a, like I see good and bad in it at the same time. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's beautifully said, honestly. I think that's fair. Um, Were you the same? Well, I always wonder whether <laughs> others felt like that. I mean, when I came here, I was wide open, definitely like, oh my God, it's the best ever. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I still, I felt like that for quite some time, actually. Um, COVID didn't really bother me too much. I mean, outside of it just being just generally scary and, you know, like you said, we didn't feel it as much here. No. Um, so I was okay. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, but the longer I stay, the more I see things that I don't necessarily like and that are tough. You yes. know, life is just tough sometimes <laughs> here. It can be. And, um, you know, unless you got a lot of money and you just doing whatever, you know, it's tough. You it really can, feel it the pressure. Be. Yes, yeah. you feel yeah. it. So, you know, so I've been kind of, I think, kind of stable with the way that I feel about it because there's still this love there for it. I love it and, and I appreciate it for what it is. Um, but also, realistically, yeah. I see the problems. I see the, you know, I feel, you know, the the toughness of the situation, the challenges. I exactly. Say. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. It's good. I'm yeah. happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely home now. We are. Mm -hmm. We are. See ya. Especially because we are married. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. it's always gonna be home. home. Yeah. You're already half so. Canadian. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So that's that's good. So you talked a little bit about culture. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about culture? Like. How did you feel about culture before you started traveling? And now that you have traveled, has it changed? Has it grown? What do you, mm -hmm. what do you feel? Um, I think my acceptance towards the culture has changed mm -hmm. a lot. The more I travel, the more I realize that everyone has different culture and how to respect it. Mm -hmm. Like we always learn that lesson in school, that you have to respect everyone's culture, but we don't know it practi practically. Exactly. So you can, I don't know, you can go to China and think like, okay, so why are people, um, I don't know, doing this like A, I don't want to say something that, you know, mm -hmm. but like, why are people doing A without really understanding that it is a culture mm -hmm. and is it, it is not for you to question that. Mm -hmm. You just have to accept it, pass, you know, like it's right. not for you to, to judge why they have the culture and to accept it and try to learn something from it. Absolutely. I think that that's, that's the structure of how it goes, how I see culture now. But also I, I believe culture change, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I'm against what some people say, oh no, like this is Ghanaian culture. Yeah. I'm like, no, like if you really see the roots, like how, no, mm -hmm. maybe it's it not. Evolves. Like, you know, yeah, it, it evolves. evolves a bit. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I never thought about that. But uh -huh. now to say that, I'm like, yeah, you know, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Being what? an Iranian woman and traveling, period, like traveling in China, um, traveling around China, how was it for you? What did people say, you know? In China? You, yeah, in China. Let's start with um, China. It was a lot about, because you know, China is a lot about like their state media. Mm -hmm. They don't really get influenced by the Western media. That's right. So whatever their media says, they accept it. That's so at right. some point, I think there was a bit of negative uh, media coverage about Iran. And mm -hmm. so a lot of people were thinking, oh, it's unsafe or mm -hmm. is it dangerous? Or they would say such things. Yeah. But then at some point it changed. I don't know why. Oh, okay. But like it turned to this positive thing that okay. like, yeah, Iran is so strong, you're standing against all the world, you know, that kind of wow. thing. So I, I kind of experienced both sides, uh -huh. like the negative and positive. But overall, I think Chinese are very open to foreigners, mm -hmm. that I would say. So I think so too. I felt, I didn't feel like someone is being disrespectful mm -hmm. towards me because I'm Iranian, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I people see. are nice. And now being in Ghana as mm. Iranian woman, how do you feel? And what in have Ghana you heard? Ghana is very interesting mm. because in China, most people had the same ideas. Okay. Right. 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 So like one thing copy paste, like you, everyone would say the same <laughs> thing to same questions, right? Right. But in Ghana, it's like there's a lot of individual thoughts about Iran. So like I remember one time someone uh, saw my name. Uh -huh. And he's like, oh, you're a Persian. Oh. I was like, how? Like, you know, my name is not that common. Yeah. So how do you know? And he's like, oh, I read a lot about Persia. Oh, wow. And like, I see these kind of instances. And then I have people who say, oh, Iran and Iraq, like, what is the difference? Uh -huh. Right? Uh huh. So it's not like a general idea about Iran. It's an individual idea. So it really depends on the person of how much he, he wants to know about Iran or mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. So 
according to that, it changes. Right. Some as far are, as their attitude towards you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, okay. You have heard, I know I definitely have heard and have been kind of following as much as I can the stories of the things that are going on in Iran right now. Yeah. But we may have a lot of viewers that don't really know, don't know. what's yeah. happening. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> do you mind just explaining to us and to the viewers what exactly sure. is the situation just the facts no um so a lot of uh, to kind of understand the situation in iran mm -hmm. is that we had a revolution years back mm -hmm. in 1979 and after that our kind of governmental system changed mm -hmm. so a lot of things uh, after that are based on islamic rules mm -hmm. And so because of that, we have a particular type of police that is called morality police. Okay. And they basically are there to make sure everybody is following the dress code, Islamic dress code. Okay. And of course, people have their own mindset about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, some, um, almost a month ago, they arrested a girl, mm -hmm. a 22 year old girl. And um, because she wasn't dressed up properly, according to the people who arrested her. Okay. Um, and uh, they beat her mm -hmm. really bad. And of course, she went into coma and then she died mm -hmm. after uh, three days, two, three days. Okay. And that brought a lot of anger to mm -hmm. people that number one, why am I being told what to wear again? Mm -hmm. Second, why would you kill someone for that? Mm -hmm. And third, why aren't, you, why aren't you telling us why you did that? Mm -hmm. Like no one came to apologize no one so people got really angry yes. and they brought it to streets they protested mm -hmm. and i think it's been 20 20 something 27 if i'm not wrong mm -hmm. it's 27 days mm -hmm. that people are in the streets wow non-stop wow and it's been a really a difficult time for me especially here mm -hmm. because number one there's not much news coverage here mm -hmm. right but i haven't seen it maybe there is but i haven't seen and I don't really see people talking about it. Right, yeah. Like, it's not... I think it's an issue that many people don't relate with right. here because there's so much freedom. That's right. That's Especially what I with religion. It's like people intermingle a lot. And so yeah. it's just... Free. Like, it, I think most people don't understand why it's a big deal. Big deal, right. I think that if the 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 protest was about corruption mm -hmm. people would have relate or something that they yes. can see okay right. what is it about but in this case i don't see much mm -hmm. much uh, attention yeah so i sometimes feel lonely uh -huh. in that matter that okay I, not many people know what i'm going through yeah but general i know it's an internal thing like it yeah. has nothing to do with the people that's right but yeah but yeah that's, that's what's been, happening but it's been crazy like many people after the girl got killed many mm -hmm. people yeah and many are <coughs> still arrested they started arresting students like children wow like it's it's just too much to take mm -hmm. and i just think uh, that what we like we are outside the country we can't do much outside. right so the only thing we can do is to talk about it right you know yeah it kind of reminds me of the situation that um, a lot of African Americans um, have gone through for years and are still going through. And it was a bit of an uprising in the last, I'll say, three to four years about it. Um, of course, with the movement, the Black Lives Matter movement, and, and, and a lot of different things because we're just seeing an increase yeah. in African Americans, particularly males, being shot and killed by police. Everything for no particular reason exactly. sometimes. Okay, it's not always the case, but sometimes. So it kind of reminded me of that, where yeah. you know, you just feel isolated, you know, and because of who you are or, 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 or what someone wants you to be, you know? Um, so I think I could relate to it a little bit because of that. And it's um, interesting because I think we got inspired a lot from that movement. Mm -hmm. Like I think um, the issue with George Floyd thing yes. really affected Iranians. Uh -huh. Like we really felt like what it feels like yeah. to be in, in his shoes. Yeah. And um, it was just, I think that Anything that happens in one country can inspire another country. Exactly. Absolutely. And I think that's what happened because yep. uh, we, like, uh, people share a lot of quotes. Mm -hmm. And they share a lot of quotes from 
African American activists, mm -hmm. and that is interesting to me because, yeah. like, we really look forward to those great quotes and um, the the activism that is happening yes. with African Americans. So I think we inspire others even when we don't know. We That's are inspired. right. Exactly. I totally agree, and I definitely wish. How is your family doing? Because I know your family is there. Yes. Are they doing? It's okay? been, that's also another issue that the internet keeps going down. You know, like um, it's not stable, mm -hmm. and um, it's very difficult. Like some days, you just don't have internet access. You don't know what is happening. You don't know whether they are safe, whether they are not. So it's just too much. Mm, yeah. And um, yeah, like there's nothing much we can do at the same time. I most of the, most of the time I call them on Skype if I cannot reach them. So I still have a way to contact them. I'm good. But still, there is that. That's scary. Yes. Yeah. It's a very scary time. Yeah. Right. What can somebody like me or what can we do mm -hmm. to help? Awareness, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, sharing because what I realized mm -hmm. all the years like because I grew up mm -hmm. in the new government right okay I grew up within this period of time mm -hmm. and I always assumed others know that mm. and now I'm like you guys didn't know yeah like what you know That's right. so I think that it's very powerful if you let others know That's right. then when everybody knows if your government wants to do something with my government, they are under pressure. Mm -hmm. They're like, hey, people would ask them, you know what they're doing to the people, how can you, you know? Yeah. So I feel like as somebody who's not from Iran, mm -hmm. the number one thing is to learn about it. Mm -hmm. And I think something um, that happened also with the Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. situation, right? Where others were also concerned, yeah. other countries were also fighting against it. and. I, I love that yes. and I think that's uh, the same in this situation we so share you know talk about it um, there are a lot of um, cute little things I would say I'll say cute because the way that they approach the information um, that I've seen about the the situation in Iran mm -hmm. so you can find those little posts and share them or when you see them share them share them share them and talk about it and yeah and hopefully you know we'll be standing with you thank for you sure. so much yeah that definitely. means a lot to me thank you yeah. thank you I appreciate it <laughs> So, like I told you, we have so much we can talk about. Yes, we can talk about tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we can. Um, but I'm going to wrap it up with a few questions about Ghana. Um, and then oh. <laughs> we have a little game we're okay, going to play. I'm excited. It's going to be a quick game, so yeah. Okay. Um, so first, what has Ghana taught you? Patience. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes. Seriously? Like, no, I am a much more patient person. Mm -hmm. Um, but like you know I've learned that my pace was wrong mm -hmm. like I think in Iran the pace is really fast and I was living in China that is even faster than Iran yeah and I had to really learn how to adjust myself to the new pace mm -hmm. of like you don't need to get everything so fast you, mm -hmm. you need to chill you need to relax mm -hmm. and things will happen so that's one thing Ghana taught me and I, I'm grateful for that that's good yeah. yeah I think that's something really good yeah have your goals or expectations been met in Ghana since you've been here? That's a tough question, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, I would say no. Okay. Maybe I, yeah, not because of Ghana, though. Okay. Because of, I think, everything that happened in the world. Like, COVID changed a lot of my plans. Mm -hmm. I had a whole different life uh, planning for myself. Yes. So no, I wouldn't blame the Ghana, but I would say yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Some expectations were different. Okay, and that's fair too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one is, you mentioned wanting to travel Ghana mm -hmm. more. Where do you want to go the most? Like, what's the first place? Tamale. That's Tamale. Tamale. Yeah. yeah, that's the first place. Tamale I want to is see. cool. Yeah, I think the northern culture is very interesting because mm -hmm. um, there are also Muslims, and I just want to know. You know, I just want to learn more about that. Mm -hmm. And like, I just like the nature over there as well. Like, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be the first place. Yeah, I think you'll enjoy it. Have it's, you traveled there? Uh, yes, I've is been there, and it is beautiful. Yeah. It's very different. So mm -hmm. you will definitely 
feel the difference. So yeah, yeah you will yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And Bogotanga, it's up that way yeah. too. So okay. Okay. So now for fifteen questions. Oh, uh, this is called <laughs> fifteen questions. Out. Yeah, I'm pulling out my. Okay. my. So uh, these questions are tailored for you, Ooh, somewhat. I have my own. <laughs> So these are very quick questions, okay? So I'm gonna ask them, you just say, it's, it's, it's either gonna be yes or no, or like a either or, like a this or that. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you two and you will choose. Okay, okay. So the first thing that comes to your mind, to your heart. Oh, that's how I make my husband choosing. confess when I wanted, like, oh. do you like red or blue? And he says, red. I knew you love red. Uh, oh, yeah. That's, that's yes, right. exactly. <laughs> you know the game. Okay. So it's something like that. Yeah. Okay. Good. I love this. Game. All right. Or yes or no. Okay. So ready? Yes. Fufu or Banku? Fufu. Team carry on or team check in? Check in. Hostel or hotel? Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> sweet or salty? Salty. Sweet, sweet. Why did I say sweet? Uh, both. Can I have it? Anyway. <laughs> you have to choose. Sweet or salty? Sweet. You said, okay. I'm going to say salty. Okay. All right. <laughs> China or Ghana? Oh, <laughs> don't put me in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> for now, Ghana. For now. <laughs> you want to stay married, yeah. so let's just say Ghana. Ghana. <laughs> Adventure travel, yes or no? Yes. Uh, nightlife or sightseeing? As sightseeing. Okay. Solo travel, yes or no? Yes or no, yes. yes. Okay. Beach or mountains? Mountains. Mm -hmm. Coffee or tea? <laughs> there are things like no tea, 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 tea. Uh, we just had tea so I'm yeah. thinking like she yeah, has to say tea. tea like no and China has the best tea sorry guys yeah. I think China has the best tea yeah, yeah no it's true <laughs> sunrises or sunsets sunsets ah. global warming true or not true mm. yeah. okay wow no mm -hmm. it's possible that it's, I've never Some thought about people think it's not oh okay. yeah it's a I, big I controversy I think I never knew it yeah, yeah. Breakfast? Yes or no? Breakfast. <laughs> yeah, yes. like that's my number one. <laughs> that's me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love breakfast. <laughs> tree be easy or tree be hard? Hard, oh, difficult. Kaka <laughs> kaka. <laughs> At the Kakra stage. Yeah. yeah, the Kakra stage. <laughs> oh, God. Last one. Home is where you are. Yes or no? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. definitely. And uh, oh, thank I you love so the game. much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I enjoyed talking to you. Same here. And I hope that you enjoyed it. Now, Anna is doing so many things. We didn't even get to that. All of the things that she's doing here in Ghana. Um, tell us where they can find you. Okay, uh, you can find my channel. It's, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, you can also We have see a my visitor. Yes. <laughs> my dog wanted to also introduce himself. <laughs> um, you can find my channel. I'm also on YouTube. Uh, my channel is Anayeta, A-N-A-I-E-T-A. -A -E mm -hmm. And um, I also right now do like videography, photography, and uh, social media management. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, wow. Yeah. And she said photography or photograph yeah. right yes so, so she took our wedding photos for yeah. our um, <laughs> wedding and they were amazing Thank she you. has a really good eye Thank so you. definitely if you need somebody to take photos thank you for watching everybody and don't forget to subscribe to her channel and my channel and we'll see you next time see you next week bye bye bye, <laughs> bye. <laughs> now i believe